Hi, Bubble folks. What's up? This is Damien from BubbleHacks.io. Welcome to the second part of my series on Bubble's new responsive engine. In the last video, we have looked into how Bubble's new responsive engine works in general. And today we're going to look into setting up a, what I call a full height page. Just a quick recap. What's a full height page? That's a page that uses the full screen of a mobile app. It's not scrollable and it's usually used for something like a landing screen, onboarding screen, paywalls, signup screens, and so on. Today, I'm going to show you a very simple method with which you can build almost any kind of full height screen that you will ever encounter using a combination of a light to parent properties, columns, and conditional margins. Okay. Let's just write right into it. I'm just going to add a new page here in my app. And the first thing that we need to do is actually upgrade the responsive settings for this individual page, because this is still in beta. Okay, cool. Once this is done, let's set our page dimensions. The way I like to do this is to start from a small screen and then use conditional margins to make my content fit to larger screens. So I'm just going to use 220 times 568 pixels, which is the size of the smallest iPhone that's currently on the market. It's going to go to the layout tab, enter it here. Okay. Once our dimensions are set, the first thing that I want to do is adjust the container layout curve that it's set to fix. What I want to do is actually align to parent and then have a column that's aligned to the top of our app. Okay. I'm just going to grab a group, just click somewhere into the app. The first thing I want to do is adjust the container layout curve that it's set to fixed. Again, here, I want to have a line to parent you, and I will explain you why in just a second. Okay. So line this to top. And the second thing you want to do is change the height and the width. Fixed width is fine, but we don't want a 400 pixels, but we want to have actually a hundred percent. So that's a hundred percent of the parent group. And again, let's go ahead and do the same for the height, give it a hundred percent. And let's also give this a nice style to make it look better. Okay, cool. Here we go. So that's our group landing page. Okay. Voila. That looks nice. Now I need another group in which I can display all the content from a page. Okay. I'm just going to add another group and let's not give this any background style. And currently the layout is set to fixed and this should actually be a column. And I want it to be aligned to the parent vertical centers and horizontal centers. We will adjust the size of the group in just a second, but for now, let's first go ahead and add our content. So we want to have a text. Let's make the center. We also want to have an image. Let's also make the center. And then we want to have two buttons. Okay. Let's also go ahead and make the center. But then let's just copy and paste it. Okay, good. I'm just going to go ahead and copy some URL into here to make it look nice. Okay, cool. So what do we have so far? We have a page that's set to the dimensions of a small iPhone screen. We have a group landing with a gradient background that's set to hundred percent height and width of our page. And we have a group B, I'm just going to call this group content, which has our content elements in it. I'm just going to first style these a bit to make things look nicer and also give this some text. Okay. So once basic styling is done, let's take care of the sizing of our elements, starting with our content group itself. Currently it's set as column. That's all we want. The width is fixed with 662 pixels that we want to have here is a hundred percent again. The element height, we don't need to set it to fixed because we just want it to be dependent on our content. So we can say fit height to content, minimum height could be zero, maximum height could be infinite. Doesn't really matter. Okay. This works. Let's take care of the elements in the group. So our text, what we wanted, we wanted to give it a fixed width of let's say 80% of the parent group width, which, which is the same as the, the page width, it will say 90, but the good thing is. If we go to the responsive setting, we see that it actually scales. 
Okay, we want to have the same for our image. Let's give this a width, let's say 50% of our page. And let's also keep the aspect ratio fixed here. Okay, let's actually do it 60. And then go to our buttons. We want to give them a fixed width, again, 80% of the page width. And then again, here. 80% of the page width, and we want to give them a fixed height of, let's say 60 pixels each. Okay, cool. So that's a basic styling for elements. Let's give our elements some padding in order to have some white space between. Let's start with the image. And a good practice here is to add padding on top of things and only add padding on the bottom in the last element if needed. Okay, we start with our image. Let's give it a top padding of let's say 50 pixels. Let's go to our button, give this also top padding of 50 pixels to keep things nice and symmetrical. And let's give this a top padding of 10 pixels. Okay, that's the basic styling for our page. Let's see how this looks like in preview. And again, I'm going to use Chrome's responsive view plugin to compare the different mobile screen sizes. Okay, you see the small iPhone that we designed for, it looks good here. On the bigger screens, things are pretty much cramped to the middle. We don't want that. So this is where our conditional margins come in. The first thing we need to do is actually be able to read our current page height. Bubble can't do this natively. Quick fix is to install the CSS tools plugin. We then take the CSS tools element and put it somewhere on the page. Okay. And then go back to our group and Actually, right now you see it's actually in my, in my column. That's not what we need. Let's just put this out of here into the landing page. That's fine because the difference is the landing page itself is organized as a line to parent. So the position of elements will not influence the position of other elements. In a loop content, which is organized as a column, each element has influence on the position of other elements. That's why it's fine here. Okay. Let's go ahead. Add a condition to our image and let's say we see as tool a page height is larger than let's say 800 pixels we want to give this a top margin of we're just going to go ahead and try 150 pixels we're going to use the exact same condition for our sign up button and then let's see how this looks okay well this looks good probably have a bit too much white space here let's go ahead and Correct this, let's give it, let's say, 100 pixels in the conditional margin. Let's try again. And voila, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. In the next part of this series, we're going to look into creating what I call scrolling pages, which are essentially just pages with repeating groups where the user is able to scroll. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.